Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall, engineer of this runaway express through the mysterious terrain of the imagination. Our fancies are only memories which are divorced from the discipline of space and time, according to the poet. And what does that mean? It means, in a sense, that we are free, free to reconstruct the past in any way that suits our purpose. And so many of us do it. But you can't kill me. I wish you could give me a suitable alternative. It's murder. No. It will be an accident. What do you mean, an accident? This automatic, this dazzling Luger automatic, you were examining it, you see. Then you didn't know it was loaded. <laughs> mystery drama, The Memory Killers, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Ralph Bell. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division and Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. I'll be back shortly with Act One. Now, People's Year-End Double Issue is here with the 25 most intriguing people of the year. From Betty Ford to Dolly Parton, from Woody to Cher, Patty Hearst to Jerry Brown, they're all here in this special double issue of People, the winners and losers of 75, and people to watch for in 76. Jacqueline Streisand, Catherine Hepburn, and Audrey too. Doris Day and Rudolph Nureyev, plus a squad of Olympic hopefuls and a line of first ladies in waiting. It's the biggest, most exciting issue of People ever. Pick up a copy today. Clay Cortland is what they mean when they say distinguished looking. Henry Clay is tall, no longer young, but middle age, which ravages so many of us, has only enhanced him. The few strands of gray serve to make the rest of his hair seem thicker. The very few lines in his face lend him a kind of attractive maturity. His deep, pleasant voice, his kindly manner, are great assets to his company, which deals in that arcane area known as public relations and marketing strategy. Well, Henry Clay is sitting in his office, and he is displaying a side of him that his clients very rarely get to see. Tell me why I'm being pessimistic, George. I didn't say you were being pessimistic. I said you were being unduly pessimistic. I think I'm the only one around here who's facing reality. Henry, we have this new account. What new account? The Dutchman. They're not Dutch, they're German. What's the difference? It's a fortune. And we don't have them as an account. Not yet. They want you to come over and sign a contract, don't they? No. If you read the letter, you'll see. I did read the letter. They want me to come over and sell them on the idea of letting us handle their American marketing strategy. Same thing, Henry. Once you get there, once you get a clear shot of the client, it's in the bag. We're going to have to make a major effort to land these people. Henry, when are you leaving for Munich? Oh, I have to remind you, George, these are not the best of times. It's worth a million bucks clear the very first year. And from there, the sky's the limit. Well... you got to go for it. The long bomb, the big play, we're rolling the dice, partner. I know. Three years ago, we're sitting pretty. Then a scandal hits Continental Engines, and poof, they're out of it. Jollison wire and cable collapses. Everybody else starts pulling in their horns. That's why we need those Belgians. German. Whatever. Uh, Nias Belt. Is that how you say it? Neues Belt. All right. New World. That's close enough. They got products that don't quit. They got everything from sports cars to diapers. Yes. I'm not sure I want to go back to Germany. Back? When, when, when were you ever there? During the war. The war? For crying out loud, Henry. That's a hundred years ago. Forget it. You're right. I have to bring this off. They're a logical client for us. We're a logical agency for them. We know it. They know it. We need each other. Ah, uh, so? So I'm going. I'll leave tonight. That's my man. I really didn't understand my reluctance. Neues Welt was made to order for us. And actually, they had sought us out. And we needed them. And so, why wasn't I jumping up and down with joy at the opportunity... Well, the truth is, I'm not by nature a man who jumps up and down with joy. 
but I could have shown a little more enthusiasm. I asked the question, but I have no idea of the answer. I think I really don't know myself very well. I'm 54 years old, and it seems that I learn more about myself every day. Won't you sit down, Mr. Cotland? Thank you, Frau Volker. Your German is flawless. Oh, thank you again. But uh, your facts are incorrect. Oh? I am not Frau Volker. I am Fräulein Volker. Oh, I'm sorry. Does an unmarried woman always move you to sorrow, Mr. Cortland? <laughs> well, I... In any event, we should dispense with Frau, Fräulein, Herr, and Mr. I should like you to call me Marlena. Marlena? That's a very pretty name. And I shall call you Henry. I have strict orders for my brother to be completely at your service until he arrives. Your brother is Dietrich Walker, who is listed as president of New World, and uh, you are the vice president, M. Walker. I, I didn't know that stood for Marlena. <laughs> is this your first visit to Germany? Well, no. I see. Well, may I ask what it is that you see? That is the sort of answer given by people who were here during the war. Well, so much has happened since. It's, it's been so long ago, I think it's all been forgotten. You are to be our guest for dinner. Oh, I don't want to inconvenience anyone. Not at all. I've heard so much about you. About me? Oh, yes. We had you investigated quite thoroughly. That is, we analyzed the work you did for other companies in America. We're very much impressed. Thank you. And I'm very much impressed. <laughs> It was then I noticed her for the first time. That is, really noticed her. I had been aware of the fact that she was about 40, very attractive, charming. But now there seemed to be something personal in it. Something directed at me. Something womanly. When I walked in there, I'd been somewhat surprised to discover that the executive I was to report to was a lady... And now I sat there and faced the fact that I could very well have fallen in love with her. What basic strategy do you think will be effective in marketing automobiles in your country? Her questions were the questions I was fully prepared to answer, and so I could answer them without thinking. In a real sense, we think America is joining the rest of the world when it comes to size and economy of operation. Is it possible that you can walk into a room, confront a woman, and fall in love at sight. But there is still a mystique about the American-made automobile. Of course, it's possible. Didn't it happen so many years ago with Caroline? Ah, uh, it's been ten years since I lost Caroline. I'm lonely. I have been from the very moment I lost her. Oh, goodness, it's much time. I hope you have no plans. Yes, I have plans. I have plans to take you into my arms. We have a dining room for all our executives. This will be a splendid opportunity for you to meet everyone. I've already met the most important person in the world. They say it can happen this way. Suddenly, without warning. I'm in love. And with a girl I don't even know. You can see the entire city from here. Of course, it's been considerably rebuilt. Yes. That's right. You said you had been here. During the war. Were you in Munich? Well, I was over Munich. Oh, you were a flyer. I was. Flight crew. I remember. I was just a child. We would hear the sirens and there would be the desperate surge to the shelters. It was... Well, we were over London and Rotterdam and other places, so... Why complain? Why should we talk about wars? It's another world today. A better one. Yes. I complimented you on your German, and everyone here is amazed that you speak it so well. Where did you learn? In college. Ah, but you have an ease. A kind of flow that can't be picked up through formal study. You acquire it through conversation. Were you a prisoner? How did you know? You were a flyer, so I could assume you were shot down. Well, not all flyers were shot down. I could be wrong. But I also recognize that your German is, um, 
Well, it's dated. Dated? Well, it's the same with English. Style and pronunciation and idiomatic things change. Now, couldn't you tell immediately if someone was using the kind of English spoken 30 or 40 years ago? Well, if somebody said hubba hubba, I guess I would. <laughs> I remember that. I was a little girl. And this big American soldier gave me a stick of chewing gum and he said hubba hubba. I, I could never find out what it meant. Well, neither could I. <laughs> You were a prisoner. Yes. Where? Well, somewhere around the Baltic. Uh, and I had to serve as interpreter. Mm. Well, if you're finished with your coffee, I should like to have you meet some of our local marketing people. She had won me over completely. Just the way Carolyn did. And yet she was unlike Carolyn. She was blonde and bright, while Carolyn was dark and subdued. But in each, there was a sweetness and a perception, and a way of making me feel comfortable. And once again, I was answering the questions automatically, from the top of my head, while my mind was completely absorbed with her. What is considered a viable cost per thousand in American print media? And now... The problem. How do I go about this? I see you on here as a rather interesting reaction. His idea is to expand our appeal in every age group. Can I be accused of making a play for her to ensure landing the account? Is it true that emphasis on quality alone is not enough? I know what I have to do. I have to get her alone, away from all these people, and just tell her I love her. Because until I do... I'll never know a moment's peace. We had a message while we were out at lunch. My brother Beatrice has been detained, but he'll be here as soon as he can. He's anxious to meet you. So, um, is there anything you'd like to talk with me about? Anything else I can tell you about the corporation? Not really. We are a large and complicated firm, and you've been exposed to a great deal. More than enough for one day. There is something I... I'd like to tell you. Yes? Well, as I think about it, I don't know how this is going to sound, and I'm not even sure this is the time to say it. <laughs> One of the basic principles of New World is absolute frankness. <laughs> That's good. Everyone is encouraged to speak his mind. Well, then I shall speak mine. Marlene, I love you. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have said it. No. I'm glad you did. Because it gives me the courage to say something, too. I... I also love you, Henry. And that's how it can happen. One day, without any warning whatsoever, in a strange country, a woman he doesn't even know, I love you is generally what people say at the end of a story. But in ours, why does this declaration of love occur at the beginning? Well, you know what they say about the course of true love. I shall return with Act Two in just a few moments. we fall in love with is the one we happen to meet at a time when we happen to be most vulnerable. Is all love love at first sight? And do we merely delay announcing it because we pretend we are getting to know the loved one better? These are personal matters of taste and temperament. All we know for sure is that Henry Cortland and Marlena Volker have fallen in love within hours after their meeting. What are we going to do, Marlene? Do? Yes. And what are we going to say? <laughs> to whom? To everyone. For instance, if your brother were to walk in here right now... I would say to him, Dietrich, Henry and I have fallen in love. But I've only just arrived in this country this morning. We have known each other for three hours. How could we explain it? <laughs> That's the wonderful thing about love. 
You're not required to explain it. Were you... Were you ever in love before? Yes. Once. You? Yes. Once. <laughs> See? We're so much the same. I don't know how to account for it. I don't either. I... I didn't want to come here. Why? Because of the war? Yes. Did something bad happen to you? Yes. What? I can't tell you. Why not? Because I don't know you well enough. <laughs> Did you hear what I just said? <laughs> yes. I can tell you I love you, but I can't. <laughs> if anybody heard us, they would really think we're crazy. But it was because of the war you did not wish to return to Germany. Yes, and then I realized I was practically alone in my thinking. No one remembered the war seriously anymore. A new generation had grown up in my country. And in mine. And the minute my plane touched down at the airport, I saw how different it was. It was no longer the gray, drab place I remembered, filled with silent, brooding people. It's become a country just like my own. Tall buildings, bustling crowds, and... Well, I even fell in love. Love? Love? Uh, who fell in love with who? Oh, Dietrich. This is Mr. Cortman from the United States. Ah, finally we meet. I'm sure we would be able to do business. Uh, was someone talking about love? <laughs> it happens to be my favorite pastime. Oh, pastime is right. Do you know Dietrich has been married four times? They're starting to call him the Bluebeard of German industry. Typical journalistic license. All my wives received the most generous settlements. I never killed any of them. Did I ever kill anyone? <clears throat> Did I ever kill anyone? I had heard those words before, pronounced exactly that way, back in the Stalag by the SS intelligence major. His name was... I don't remember his name. I was always too tired when he spoke to me. Too tired. And everything hurt too much. Let me look at this man's face again. Let me listen to his voice. Let me concentrate. What are you saying, Marlene? I'm saying we're in love. Who is? Henley and I. We are in love. But he just... We came. both know everything you're going to say. We know how it sounds. It sounds marvelous. <laughs> then you don't think we're crazy? Henry, Marlena, what has happened to the two of you? That sudden, spontaneous recognition of love. One sees a face, and instantly one is overwhelmed. I have been seeking this all my life. I've never found it. Volker. Major Volker. Was that his name? Is this his face? Yes, it must be. It has to be. The way he just said, did I ever kill anyone? Did I ever kill anyone? Did I ever kill anyone, Lieutenant Cortland? I never killed anyone. I never have to kill anyone. My prisoners kill themselves through stupidity. What do you want, Major? A German officer in this camp is an American agent. Who? You know him. Who? Uh I don't know what you're talking about. I just have to get some sleep. Tell us his name, and you can sleep. Plenty of time for sleep. Americans, I... If he doesn't get sleep, you're killing me. No. No. You are only killing yourself. <laughs> Hasn't this been a wonderful dinner? Thank you, Dietrich. I never knew when I made the reservation this morning that it would be a dinner to celebrate my sister's engagement. And now where shall we go? What do you say, Henry? Darling? Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
Unless you're tired, Henry, and you'd like to get some sleep. Well, sleep? There's plenty of time for sleep. Plenty of time for sleep. That was the way he said it. He had to be that major. He had to be. Those scars just above his right eye. Oh, he's the one. How could I ever forget? Plenty of time for sleep. Well, there is such a thing as jet lag. Oh, 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 oh that is an old wives' tale. And since when do those old wives fly in jets? A man needs his rest. Listen to the way she talks now that you're hooked. Pay attention to this, Henry. It's still not too late to break the engagement. Who side are you on, Dietrich? You fell in love with her because she appears to be glamorous, beautiful, mysterious. And once she has got you, she shows her essential nature. She becomes a housefrau. If you think an American housewife is something, wait till you experience a German housefrau. And who should know better than you? <laughs> Maybe you are right. Besides, I must be getting older. Time was when I could party all night and still be at the office bright and early. We must all be at the office bright and early and hear Henry tell us how to sell New World in America. Hello? Henry. George. You know what time it is here? Yeah, well, I can't help it. I have to know how things are going. George, I've got to get some rest. Now look, I'm, I'm, I'm nervous. About what? Everybody knows we're pitching this account in New World. And if we don't get it, it's going to look like, like we... I understand. What you did was tell everyone we had the account. Well, Henry... And so now we can't afford to lose it, okay, huh? Okay, okay. So I was hasty. I made a mistake. Henry, we must have that account. we got to have it. All right. All right, goodbye. Ah, we must have that account. We must. I was dreaming before that phone rang. What was I dreaming about? Or was I dreaming? Am I living through it again? Are we there again? Back there in that damp, stinking cellar in the Stalag. Are we back there, Frank and I? Back there? Henry, you give me some, some water? I, I can't, Frank, I can't. They don't let us have anything unless we can get it. Forget it. It doesn't matter, anyhow. I'm as good as dead. Oh, no, Frank. Bad. Bad. dead. Let me put my jacket over here. No, no. You're pleased to death. Try to sleep, Frank. Maybe rest will help you. I can't sleep. I to bust it up inside. I, I didn't tell him anything. I took everything. But I didn't open my mouth. Frank, Frank, don't try to talk. That's... That's about all I can do now. There's only something I could do for you, kid. There is. Live. Get get that SS major. That what's his name? Volker. Volker. Whoever, whatever. Get him. Get him for what he did. Not just to me, but to everybody. Yes, Frank. The worst kind there is. Never gets his own hands dirty. Get him for me. I will. Swear to me, Henry. Swear you'll do it. I swear. Say it. Say, I swear I'll kill that SS Major. I swear I'll kill that SS Major. Yeah. I... Frank. Frank. And so you see the entire campaign is coordinated. You stress the same basic theme in all the media. It's fantastic, Henry. All my life, I was afraid of brilliant men. Look at me. I just fell in love with one. Now, about some details. Ah, ha, ha. Dietrich is a genius at details. 
Oh, that's what life is all about, yeah? He was talking to me. And I must have been answering him because what he wanted to know was stuff I could discuss in my sleep. And someone else was talking to me, too. Someone else. A very dirty, bloodied man who was lying on a filthy floor in a prison camp. Kill him, Henry. Kill him? You swore you'd kill him. How can I kill him? Shoot him. Stab him. Strangle him. Does it matter? Kill him. But... But the war is over. So what? How could I explain a thing like that? Tell everybody what happened. But it's another world now. Nobody remembers. Nobody cares. You swore you killed him. I'm not even sure he's the one. He's the one. Kill him. No, no, I, I, I can't. You've got to kill him for me. You're asking me to throw away my life. I'm asking you to keep your promise. What promise? Something I said when I was black and blue and freezing and starving and half crazy. Kill him. It doesn't matter anymore. It doesn't make any difference sure, anymore. You kill him. Sure, sure, you can say kill him. What have you got to lose? You're dead. He killed me. I can't help that. You have no choice. But I do. I'm sorry, Frank. I'm not a hero. I'm just an average, everyday person. I, I can't do what these fellows do in books and pictures. I take the world as I find it. I live in the world as it is. Is that supposed to be living? You're dead. Are you better off? I'm beginning to wonder. When they got to work on you, did you tell? Is that why you're still alive? I cannot see a single flaw in this presentation. Then we are to award the account to Mr. Cortland's firm? You mean your future husband isn't entitled to special consideration? <laughs> Only at home, during business hours. <laughs> isn't she the most... Remarkable woman you have ever met, Henry. Henry? Henry, darling. The man's in a daze. No wonder. Look what's happened to him. In a single day, he lands a major account and a wife. And what would you do? Confront Dietrich and have it out? Uh, sure you would sitting there in your comfortable chair. But Henry has a great deal to lose. But you say, we listen to these tales because we want heroes. Heroes who are not afraid the way we are. Well, we still have a third act. We may come across a hero yet. are born, not made. And this seems to be true from Henry Clay Cortland's viewpoint. Oh, Henry looks like a hero. He appears to be the kind of person who can certainly take care of himself. But he has a chance for heroics and evidently he has chosen to turn it down. Something no true born hero would ever think of doing. Hello? Wonderful. Do you still love me? Do I still love you? Well, how am I to know you're not a person of uh, mercurial temperament? You may fall violently in love with one day and just as violently out of love on the next. Well, I might say the same about you. Well, I still love you today. As much as yesterday? No. No? I love you twice as much. And it was true. We loved each other even more. I put everything else out of my mind. The past, the prison camp, Frank, the Major. I lived a new life in a new world, and there was nothing I could do about what may or may not have been a lifetime ago. I decided to walk to the office. It was such a glorious day, the kind of day lovers are entitled to. And I didn't see the speeding automobile that seemed to be bearing down on me. If a wide awake youngster who happened to be crossing at the same time didn't trust me, I would have been killed. Hey, watch where you're going, you half-wit. 
and the boy who had pushed me to safety smiled at me. I had shouted my anger at the driver in English, and I looked at his face closely. I owed the boy my life, and his face became familiar. But it seemed older. It was... Oh, good Lord. It was Frank. Frank. Am I going crazy? You've got to kill him, Henry. I... I... Him or you. What are you talking about? The car. The driver tried to run you down. It was just some nut, you see. Henry, you recognized him. And that's why he has to kill you. What are you talking about? He's afraid of you, Henry. Why should he be afraid of me? What can I do to him? Kill him. But... How can he be sure I'm the one who... He can't take the chance. So he's trying to buy you off. You're crazy. Am I? First, he's giving you his sister. He isn't giving me anyone. She'd never marry you if he said no. She loves me. Second, he's giving you this fantastic account. Everything to shut you up. All right. Suppose it's true. Then why should he want to kill me? Because he's afraid. You keep looking at him when he talks to you. You can't help yourself. You keep looking at him in a certain way. He figures you're playing cat and mouse with him. He's afraid. So he knows he has to kill you. I don't believe it. You don't want to believe it. You've got no choice. Kill him before he kills you. Oh, isn't it beautiful out here? Yes, darling. It reminds me of the mountains back home. Henry? Yes? Had you ever met my brother before? Dietrich? Mm-hmm. Well, why do you ask? Well, it could be my imagination. What could be your imagination? Whenever, whenever we've all been together, it seems to me that you've been staring at Dietrich. Oh, uh, I wasn't aware that I was staring. But you... Really didn't ever meet Dietrich, did you? I, uh, I don't know where I could have. Uh, has he ever been to America? No. Well, I've only been here during the war. Uh, what, uh, what was Dietrich doing during the war? He was in prison. Prison? Yes. He had been sentenced to death. Oh? Why? He was a member of the underground, the resistance. The what? Many people are not aware of it. But we had an anti-Nazi underground here, too. Well, you say he was sentenced to death. Uh, how did he get out? They really didn't know what they wanted to do with him. And they thought maybe they could get more information out of him by keeping him alive. And finally, his friends helped him escape. Oh. So, I don't really think you ever might have seen him before. I suppose not. Perhaps someone who looked like him. Perhaps. <sighs> Those were such bad days. Bad days for all of us. Why are we even talking about them? <laughs> we should be talking about us. I have asked all of you to attend this meeting to become acquainted with Mr. Henry Clay Cortland of the United States. And Mr. Cortland is not only joining our official family, but he will also be a member of my person. No, it was not my imagination. He's looking at me. He's looking at my face as if he's trying to read something, tell me something. But what? What? He's trying to make a deal with you, Henry. But don't trust him. He wants you off guard so he can kill you. Let me alone. All these people are looking at me. Some other people are looking at you too, Henry. Guys from the camp. Guys from your bunk. Look at us, Henry. Shut up. A man's asking me a question. Joe Turner. Bobby Moretti. And Harry. Look at us. We're all here. And we're all dead. And we're all asking you one question. When are you going to kill him? How, how can I be sure? You don't want to be sure. You want the girl, the money. How can I kill him if I'm not sure? We're sure. Each one of us. 
And you've got to kill him. You have to kill him, Henry. You know that, don't you? Yes. I know. When? When? Tonight. Tonight? You heard me. I said tonight. Marvelous. This is what we call action. We ask Henry Clay Cortland when we can have his overall plan of action, and he says, tonight. Hello. Henry, Dietrich here. How are you coming on the plan? Oh, how am I coming here? Uh, fine. Why don't I send a limousine over for you and you can work here at my house? Your house? No, it's more spacious, comfortable. And you and I can chat. Why not? Your glass is empty, Henry. I've had enough, thanks. Now, how do you want to do this? I just sketch out some notes and... Then have them headlined on charts. No, I didn't mean that. I meant the other thing. What other thing? You know, Lieutenant Cortland. So it's true. You were this Major Fulka. I'm forgotten. And you were Lieutenant Cortland. I had forgotten, too. Your sister said... Yes. I know. I had to tell her something. After all, she wanted to believe her brother was an underground hero. She was half right, my sister was, and that's because I told her a half-truth. I had been in the underground. Is that so? Oh, yes. And they caught me. And they worked on me. You know how well they could do that. Oh, yes. And so, after a while, I decided to join them. Well, that's all that matters. You became one of them. You were one of them. No human being can hold out against clever and controlled torture. I did. No, you did not. You talked. I never talked. You told us how to uncover the agent. How could I? I didn't know. But you told us who among your comrades could tell us. Frank Watkins. I never... Oh, yes. You didn't know. But at the end, you screamed and shouted his name. I actually... I... It didn't matter because, you see, he was already dead. And of no use to us. And now? And now, there's only this way out. I will have to kill you. Not if I can kill you first. Ah, but I have the opportunity, while you don't. My Luger automatic, an intricate and sophisticated weapon. In all the years I have owned this gun, it has never taken a life. Well, there is a first time for everything. You're going to kill me. Oh, yes. It's murder. How do you propose to get away with it? It will not be murder. What will it be? An accident. Two old soldiers get together over a glass of wine. We talk about weapons. You ask to see my lure. You examine it. Unfortunately, there is a round in the chamber. Neat? Very neat. I'm sorry it has to be this way. But you would tolerate no other ending. I don't intend to sit here and let you kill me. I'm afraid there's nothing you can do. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, no, drop it. Come on, drop it. You, drop it. you are a dead man. Drop it now. I can have you killed anywhere in this country. All I have to do is... Ah. Well, I guess you will have the last word. 
Pasta. Oh. Was that a shot? Dietrich. Oh, what, what happened to Dietrich? Henry. Henry. Darling. Darling, he wanted to show me how the Luger automatic pistol works, and he didn't know there was a live round in it. How much did Marlena hear before she came into the room? What did she know before she came into the room? Who knows what takes place in the heart and mind of another? All we know is the outside of what we see. And what we saw was that Henry and Marlena fell in love. What I can tell you is that they got married. And as far as I know, they are still quite happy. And you'll be happy if you wait to hear what I tell you when I return shortly. Dietrich Volker and Henry Clay Cortland. They were two people out of millions whose lives and fates were formed by forces beyond their control. At one time, a man could choose to die for his beliefs, but no more. There are ways to make all of us see another light, a different light. But here, we have the same light seven times each week, and you are invited to bask in the glow. Our cast included Ralph Bell, Patricia Wheel, Robert Dryden, and Nat Olin. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brock. I shall be back shortly. to interpret ourselves to ourselves, I offer you the words of a Roman poet named Catullus who lived 2,000 years ago. I hate and I love. Why I do so, I do not know. But I feel it. And I am in torment. Perhaps when we comprehend a little better our own torment, we will better understand the torment of others and in consequence be a little kinder to one another. Is that not possible? I leave it up to you. Our cast included Christopher Tabori, Terry King, Russell Horton, and John Beale. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. I can't wait to meet your daughter, sir. Well, I'll call her. Evie! What? C come here, would you? This better be good. She's got a lot of spots. Yes. What is it? Evie, I'd like you to meet a nice young man. Oh, no! My hair looks dirty. Daddy, how could you do this to me? I want to die! <clears throat> I'm afraid her cream rinse makes her hair a little greasy. May I suggest agree? Of course you'd agree. All you have to do is look at her. No, no. Agree cream rinse and conditioner. It helps stop the greasies. Really? Sure. After I shampoo, I use agree cream rinse and conditioner. And, and it, it helps stop the greasies. Right. Gee, it sounds like I would like agree, too. Well, agree cream rinse and conditioner is 99% oil free. Evie, stop crying. I'll go get some agree. And after you use it, I'll drive you to the movies, okay, Evie? No. Why not? Because you got a creepy car. What? It's a brown station wagon. I hate station Some wagon. conditioners contain oils that can cause the greasies. But Agree Cream Rinse and Conditioner is 99% oil-free. And try Agree Shampoo. It helps stop the greasies, too. I'm glad you decided to come to the movie. Your hair looks great. Thank you. And I love your station wagon. Was our story one of deep remorse or inexorable fate? I don't know. I leave you only with another quote from Omar Khayyam. The moving finger writes, and having writ, moves on. Nor all the piety nor wit 
shall lure it back to cancel half a line, nor all your tears wash out a word of it. Our cast included Jack Grimes, Belika Gray, Court Benson, and Russell Horton. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. Mrs. E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.